All right, we're going to take a look at what's new, a couple new things anyway, in Motion Builder 2017. It's actually a decent update. They put some development time and effort into it, and it's worth taking a look at, especially if you're working with two-person moves or you're using Story a lot, um, or you're just wanting better posing ability. So let's take a look. One new feature right off the bat in both Maya and Motion Builder HIK is this little blue character. Uh, one of the common complaints for animating in Motion Builder is that when you pull on a character it affects the entire character and the fix to that was always go to body part mode and that limits it but then when you set a keyframe now you're keying just the body part so there were some scripts and tools to get around this you could go in here and say key in full body but be in body part a little bit of jumping through hoops. So now uh, you can be in full body keying mode but limit the effect of the pull and that's what this does. So now it basically filters by body part but when I keyframe I'm in full body. All right. so uh, this is really pretty handy and this is new little blue button no pull manipulation. Alright so that's that. Let's go ahead and go to story and check out what's new in story. So, um, one of the issues I wanted to address is that I've seen a few people uh, think now that there aren't um, animation layers or animation layers don't work with story. Uh, in 2017 there's been an update for that and I'll show you that in a second, but first I wanted to address um, layers in story mode. So I have this animation and I've got it blending and he's kind of popping up into this, this um, you know, stand, and now he's he's going to stand. So, you know, we've always been able to edit this stuff. But uh, if I wanted to, to start with a pose to begin with, or I wanted to change something about this animation, you know, let's say if I wanted this pose to be in the start, uh, I can go to pose controls and I can add a pose. But now if I want to keyframe that, this is a read-only clip. So, um, I could bake everything and use animation layers, but instead I'm going to insert a subtrack. So inside Motion Builder, in story mode, layer really is the same as subtrack. And you can do additive or override. So I'm going to right click, and because I already have the character selected, insert subtract character additive. And now I'm going to go to the frame back at the beginning where I want my pose to go, and I can paste. Uh, and nothing happens because I have to turn on keyframe. So now I'm telling this track to allow keyframes. And I should be able to paste. And now you can see I've pasted the pose. And if you look down here, the clip has started to build itself. So first of all, we don't even have to set a keyframe. I've now got this pose uh, kind of stored across this entire animation. And now he's going to do some weird stuff. So in this case I do want to keyframe it because I'm changing the pose so I'm going to keyframe and now I've got a key on this new track. I have the same ability to filter by body part I have the same ability to change the weight um, and it stays with the character so I can collapse this down. So now I'm editing non-destructively across all the clips. I'm going to come over here and zero key That's a little far, so I'm just going to move this clip back here. So now he starts in that pose, he comes back, and now I've, I've done an edit directly in my clip. I can go along here and keyframe, or I can animate the weight on and off as well if I want to adjust it. So all that's just like a layer. Now I can mute it and see the difference between my layers, and we're good to go. I have a ghost for it. Um, the next thing I want to show you real fast is now that I've done this edit, trying to keep all these together can be difficult. So, you know, if I have to select these every time, instead I'm going to select them, right click, and create a clip group. And this is new to 2017. And now if I move the group around, I can keep my edit together. I can collapse this down and it edits both of them. And now you'll see that it changed the start of my clip here, which isn't necessarily a good thing. So be, be aware. Um, that can kind of mess things up, but you can also go back in and um, you know bring this back, fill it in, 
you can right click on the clip and say um, expand expand clips and it'll kind of re-snap it and then you can adjust it so just be aware if you're editing the, the start frame it wants to kind of mess with these overlaps but uh, as far as just you know moving your your edits together um, you know offsetting everything to frame zero and and working together that way it's pretty handy uh, right click and you can create multiple groups so if you're working with props and animations you can group all the clips together in different layers and you can then uh, disable it now there's a ton more story features I'm not going to get into I cover some of this in the motion builder uh, rig to retarget on-demand class from Rigging Dojo. This is just a free video I'm giving out for people to kind of take a look at what's new in 2017. Okay, so we've hit story, addressed the layer issue. Now let's say I'm happy with my edit. I'm going to shrink my timeline down so we're not making a lot of animation. Um, I can right click and say frame start and end. That's nothing new. Okay, so I'm actually going to go a little further and down here you can kind of see what the start take looks like so now I've got him starting to stand up I'm happy with this I'm going to bake this to the current take alright so now we've done our edit we've cooked everything down we've got our frames right and I'm going to delete my story and turn it off okay so the next part I wanted to show you real fast was how layers now work better with story and this is kind of cool I can go ahead and add an animation layer and let's say that this pose was actually not quite what I wanted I want a different pose so I'm going to grab this one I'm going to come back here and I'm going to paste and keyframe and go ahead and come forward and zero key so now he starts at the right pose I want and he's starting to move around uh, this is modus zombie character with some of their zombie pack animation on it. Just a shout out to them because they're they've been kindly using uh, letting us use their motion for a long time. And full disclosure, I consult with them quite a bit, so I'm happy to use their work. Uh, and they're awesome for doing demos with. So now I've got a pose and I'm out of story mode, but you know I don't want to have to bake my layer. I just want to drop this down to story and do some more editing. In the past, that was kind of difficult, so I'm going to go ahead and insert an animation track, pick a character, and I'm going to right-click and say Insert Current Take. Now, it's going to give us a new warning in a second. Merge animation from multiple layers will be inserted. So what it's doing now is instead of having to pre-bake this layer or ignoring it, we can now let Story automatically merge the layers and cook them into the clip. And here we go. So now story, we can turn that on. I can work on editing this. Um, and you know what? I still want to edit this layer. So I'm going to turn story off. And I decide, you know what? I need to change some timing on this stuff. I'm going to hold this pose longer. All right, so now I have my clip. And in the past, I would have had to delete this or copy and paste the animation and do some, some jumping around. But there's an option now called connect to current take. And honestly, this might be in here previous to 2017, but um, I haven't noticed it before, so I'm going to throw this under 2017, but if someone knows about it before then, awesome. What I want to show you is update from current take. So we've edited the take, turned story off so that we could update the layer, and now I'm going to update this clip. And it's going to recook the layer and it's going to cook the take and it's going to add it back in there now with our change timing and with our changed edit. Why this is nice is because if you've gone in and you've edited this clip and you've still made changes you can still update the clip and it's not going to mess up your your edit so it's like replacing the clip source without having to change your your edits and your blends so it's really pretty cool and something you need to know about. It also means that you can use your your uh, ghost, we turn ghost on, and we have positioned our character and done some kind of cinematic edit to it where it starts maybe, you know, he's over here on the side. Well, if I turn story off and we go back to playing and we have our animation locally in the center of the scene, I can keep editing, and now I can go back 
to say update current take and it cooks it and I turn story back on and it saves my edit location so this is really really fantastic for updating existing edits without destroying all your work so please take a look at that all right we're gonna leave story now and I'm gonna jump over to a website uh, Richard check out his uh, Vimeo page. He's got a lot of really, really nice animation, and he's been doing game animation forever. And he has a he's a big proponent for both space switching, for creating better animation, which we're big fans of. And uh, he's really done a great job of exploring how to use animation layers to the fullest of their ability. And so he's he's created a tutorial here with his little character. And the first thing is doing um, subtractive animation. And I'm going to mute this real quick, but you can see here he's got uh, the character, and it's just too much motion for the cycle. So, you know, he's got uh, some workflow tips and tricks with layers, but they're not necessarily the most efficient with the way he's using layers. So, one, we want to show people how to do it in Motion Builder, and two, a couple quicker ways. So, in this case, he's copying all of the animation and moving it to a new layer. Maya and Motion Builder have the ability to kind of duplicate a layer. So uh, let me clear this and come back to our our character animation. Okay, so here's the animation, and it's he's just moving around too much on the ground, right? So uh, I'm going to simply create a layer, and an additive layer is not going to work. We actually want to make an override. So now this override's here, and uh, in this case. I can just keyframe this this pose. I could use the pose tool, but I don't need to. I can simply keyframe it, and um, now he's going to hold that pose for the entire time. Well, really, what we want to do is we want to bring the weight down on this layer. So you can see that if I mute this layer, you can see here's the bigger action and here's the subdued action because he's kind of laying on the ground. So now we can keep him moving much smaller. We've basically used his own motion pose to reduce all of the animation um, action down to a smaller space, and we haven't had to rekey anything. And now I can just animate the layer uh, so that he speeds up once he um, kind of gets done. You know, he's struggling, he's slow, he sees something, and now he's, he's getting a little more violent, right? So that's just using a single pose plus the layer weight with an override option in order to uh, dampen or lessen motion, which is really great if your feedback comes back that it's too much or you want to kind of play with uh, you know, reduction and, and ideas without having to start over from scratch. Now the other thing that he talks about coming up next is really pretty cool is uh, using a pose and a layer to basically turn the animation into an additive track and that way he can then multiply all the animation together. So, I'm going to delete this layer. I'm going to simply copy this layer or duplicate this layer with all its animation uh, once, and I'm going to go back to the base layer and I'm going to add two more layers and I move the animation to the top. Okay, so now we have uh, two layers and three layers and I'm going to select all of them and right click and set all of them to override. Okay. And if we check them, they should all be... Oh, it didn't quite take. So I'm going to set these to override. And uh, this bottom layer, we're going to go to this frame, our first frame, and keyframe, full body pose. Um, and that'll store a pose on this layer. And I'm going to go to the second layer and keyframe. And then our top layer should actually be the animation. So what we want to do is we want to take this existing top layer animation that's in override, right? So this is override, and this is a pose, and this is a pose, and we want to convert this to additive. So I'm going to simply select this this layer and this layer, and I'm going to merge them. And right here, the result layer is what we want to switch from from automatic to additive. And when it merges the animation, it's going to make it an additive layer, so it actually bakes the animation down against this pose and creates different curves. It creates an additive animation layer. So we can merge this. 
And what we should end up with is still the exact same animation, except this animation is, um, is an additive, additive process. So if we turn the pose off of uh, this character, it's basically going to look kind of freaky because now it's trying to add 100% of motion to the base animation. So we can see if we select the curves and go to uh, our F-curve window, here are the additive curves. I'm sorry, these are the original curves on the animation. And if we go to the base layer, now these should look a little different. They should be merged down as an additive layer. In this case, I'm not sure if this took... Oh, you know what? I messed up my pose. So let me go ahead and come back here real fast. Sorry. Uh, undo. Well, actually, I'll just delete this down. All right, let me redo this real fast. So I made a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and create one layer and set it to add uh, override. And I'm going to go ahead and keyframe my character. And now there's actual values on this track. Uh, something happened earlier where the layer didn't take the value. So um, now I'm going to duplicate this layer again. So now I have two copies of the pose that have keyframed. And now I'm going to duplicate the base animation layer and move that to the top and set it to override as well. So now all of these are bold. They're, they're set to override. We should have the exact same animation. Now I can select these and merge, converting it to an additive. And we should now have a animation value on this layer that looks different than the base layer, which we can see. So here is the base layer animation, and here is the additive animation. So now you can simply duplicate this top layer as an additive, and now that's way too much animation. But what we can do is plus and create an uh, overdriven animation. So now we're actually using the animation to make it a much more exaggerated pose. So let's say we want him more violent at the beginning. I can mute this and we can push the overall animation much further. So we want him more exaggerated for the first half of this animation where he's flailing around. And then we can zero the key off and let him get back to normal. Okay. So now we have done the opposite. Instead of reducing the motion, we've created an, um, an additive animation with uh, layers. The other cool part of this is that we've basically converted our existing animation to an additive layer. And you could save this off to a game engine as an additive track that lets you, in real time, mix the two animations together and plus your animation. So uh, not only have you got an ability to, to exaggerate emotion, you have the ability to cook out layers and convert um, animation into an additive track for the entire animation, which is pretty incredible. Just, just using um, a pose and the existing animation, and when you merge, making sure that your result mode is additive. Uh, Richard covers this really well in the animation tutorial here, um, so please go check his out and then you know, reference ours as maybe some more efficient workflow with layers. Everything we did in Motion Builder, you can do inside of Maya. Uh, the third clip he shows is basically using um, an existing pose and the layer to uh, reduce or blend into a new position. So um, I'm not going to go through this. He does a really nice job explaining how he's doing it and showing you the result, but uh, I just wanted to show you the, the exact same process for the first two parts inside of Motion Builder. Um, if for some reason it happens where mine wouldn't take the keyframe and update it correctly with the layer, uh, one of the properties of layers inside of Motion Builder is if you have an override layer and it's, just, it's stopping the animation, you can always set the, the weight to zero and at any point uh, keyframe into that layer. And you can see right here, we now have actual values for the pose, and I can bring the weight back up. 
And you know we've we've shared this tip before, and and the guys over at Epic Games shared it for the GDC tips. But uh, you can you can always grab a pose into an override layer without having to start over. Um, this saves you a lot of the steps Richard was doing, which was duplicating layers and deleting keyframes. So he would duplicate a layer, and then he would select everything but the first frame and delete it, or everything from the last frame. So we just wanted to show you a faster way to use his awesome tips and you know use the power of the software. Uh, built-in functionality. So we hope this helps. Um, share back and let us know if you like these tips and if you want a bunch more Motion Builder technique and uh, 2017 updates go check out our on-demand Rigging Dojo Motion Builder class and uh, actually I can show you that real quick. Rigging Dojo on-demand and we have a Vimeo channel with old stuff, but we also have ondemand.riggingdojo.com where we have a ton of new training material. And in here you'll find our Motion Builder Rigging to Retargeting Workshop, and it covers tons of tips that you won't find anywhere else, and um, plus bonus material and all kinds of stuff. So you can even pay over three months. Pretty good deal. So check it out. Enjoy your Motion Builder layering, and... Uh, Give 2017 a second look. Bye, everybody.